first off, congratulations. Hard, hard fight, hard earned victory. Um, interestingly, talking to Scott Coker, he actually scored the fight for your opponent, MVP. What's your immediate reaction to that? Probably the first time you've heard that. So, uh, what do you say to those who suggest that MVP might have done enough to win? Um, what, uh, what rounds besides round four? You know, I, I get it. It was, uh, like I said, props to him. He's fast and explosive. But I won all those positions, and I took the fight where I wanted it, you know. And so if he would have wanted to keep it standing, then why didn't he? And so I won round one, two, three, and five. So, I mean, if you think that um, besides round four, clearly it was him, you know. And one, one five, and two is clearly me. So uh, I don't know. I guess, I guess people want to uh, can score You know, that's why judging is the way it is in our sport. So... Good for him, I guess. Fight MVP is a very tricky proposition. Um, you said so in the cage. You know, you were getting booze. Obviously, you're in MVP's backyard. But as someone who's been in there for five rounds with him, explain to us just how tough a proposition it is to deal with someone as uniquely skilled as him. Um, how you dealt with it? Yeah, you know, you watch uh, you watch his fights, and he KOs people, and all these. So you, you have to be smart. You know, you have to stay. You have to stay back. Long hands, good defense. You can't rush in. Everybody that's rushed in on him ends up flat or a broken skull or a broken jaw. He's a dangerous guy. So, um, you know, I've been competing at the highest level for a long time with wrestling and everything else, and that's where that's where champions are made in that, those kind of fights. You find a way to win. You make it gritty. You pick your shots. You're tactical um, because he's a guy that you know. It, the first round, it's it was kind of you know eye-opening to how fast he was, and then I had to find my spots. So, um, like I said, it's, it's different watching him until you get in there and have to feel that distance and um, speed. Just building on that, what was it like when he was having those uh, taunting motions and wind up his hands in front of you? How difficult was it to stay focused on your game? Because obviously the idea of the taunting is to detract you and make you angry and cause a mistake within, within yourself, which obviously didn't happen. Uh, so what was your mindset when those things were happening? Yeah, um, you know, in the fourth, you know, I didn't really throw a lot there because that's when you get hit and you try to match his speed, you know. Um, so I kind of had to, you know, high guard. Daly did a good job when Daly fought him. You know, high guard. Same with Lima. They didn't throw a whole lot because when you try to get in a war with him, he gets out of the way and then he hits you. So, um, you know. Like I said in the pre, you know, previous leading up to the fight, you had to stay focused for 25 minutes, and it's a it's a mind game out there to stay focused. He's you know going in between his legs, up and down, uh, making gestures with his hands. His feet are moving everywhere. Your mind, you know, fighting's a lot more detailed than than the average person realizes. What's all going processing through your brain in there during that fight? And. Um just in terms of, you obviously you're holding the belt on your shoulder, how great does it feel to have the gold around you? Obviously you want to unify the titles down the line as well. Um, yeah, you know, I, I started wrestling at five years old. Um, same hometown as Brock Lesnar. You know, got to win state titles. Um, but I went to college and I came up short four years in a row. You know, I was a four-time All-American, but I never won gold. And the reason why I got into this sport was for this moment right now. And, that's a lot of hard work, and you know, I dropped to my knees. My family was there; like they know how much this meant to me, um, and that's why I got in the sport. Was become world champ, and it happened tonight. Logan, I just want to ask about how your prep is like. We obviously know Michael Van Page has a very different frame. Uh, there's not very many people that sort of match the frame. I think the only guy that comes to mind really is Raymond Daniels, uh, who's on the West Coast of the States. Um, how are the guys with something the main sort of like guys like uh, Bobby Lola, Ian Gary? Jason Jackson, uh, Gilbert, all, all the team there, how have they helped you prepare for this battle? So when uh, Gilbert fought uh, Stephen Thompson, Raymond Daniels was out there. So I got to spend a little time with him, even before, you know, I knew this. So I got to feel it a little bit. Um, Jason Jackson, good, you know, good friend of mine um, in my weight class. Delano Taylor, he fights at PFL. He's long, athletic. Ian Gary, um, good friend of mine at Sanford. All those guys are kind of long, rangy, good counter strikers, but uh, they're not as fast as MVP, you know. Like, and that's kind of that's kind of what it uh, what I kind of felt out there. 
um, I did a good job of not uh, not getting clipped hard. You know, I kind of saw things coming, had high guard, and so. But the guys at Sanford have helped me get this. You know, they're the reason I'm here. That whole coaching staff, from Kami Barzini, Jason Stroud, Robbie Lawler, Henry Hoof, Greg Jones, all those guys helped me get this. Yeah. Um, so for another question, obviously online there's a lot of criticism about your style of fighting. Uh, some people call it lay and pray. Some people uh, describe it as being a little bit especially after last weekend's uh, UFC bout to Carlos Vaz and for example, maybe a little bit of mm -hmm. people get a bit tentative about uh, how they describe Vaz. Uh, yeah, who? Stuff. People, people on Twitter, yeah. people on Instagram yeah. that have never been in there. You know, thank you for watching. I appreciate those people, but you, you haven't felt it until you feel it. Um, you know, you don't. You, people don't know how to react. Like they've never been in that situation. So you know, without the fans, we're nothing. And I get that. Um, but when you have this much on the line, you have to find a way. Um, you know, the paper says, what, what everything says is, I'm world champ. And, that, and you know, I'm kind of sticking to that. Um, I, you know, Bader's fight, you know, Bader's a good friend of mine, I know. Yeah, um, it wasn't the most exciting fight, but he found a way to win. And at the end of the day, you know, we get in this sport to win. You know, we want to be entertainers, but this is also a sport. And at the end of the day, you know, being champ and being a winner is important too. There was some question about scoring the cards. Uh, some people will say maybe MVP should get a rematch. Now you've come to London, you fought in MVP's hometown. If you were to offer a rematch, would it have to be in your hometown or under your, under your rules? I'm, I'm not interested in that right now. You know, right now it's, uh, I'm, a, I'm world champ and we got, we got to see what happens with Amasov, you know. Prayers to him. Um, I respect the hell out of him. We spent, you know, 15 minutes in there. Um, we both improved um, since then. Both became champ since then. So uh, right now, I'm, I'm not interested in any the rematch. Uh, Logan, first of uh, congratulations, obviously. You're 14 and one now, and now the interim champ. We're in a place at the minute where welterweight seems to be one of, the most, one of the most competitive divisions in, wow, in every organization. How do you see yourself stacking up against um, yeah, you know, uh, I train at Sanford MMA, so I spent a lot of time with Kamaru Usman, Gilbert Burns, um, God, who else is, the guys that fought for the belt, Usman's been there a long time, Mike Chandler's dot five at lightweight, um, Robbie Lawler's a former champ, so you know, Ian Gary's there, all these guys, you know, Delano Taylor, Jason, all these guys, different divisions. Um, Shalov Cobb's there. Um, so we have a lot of guys. And listen, there's a reason why I have confidence when I go out and, and fight, and it's because I compete with guys like that. So I know where I'm at, and um, that's why I have confidence walking into my fights. And um, if dream match potential, someone outside of Bellator, if you had to pick, one match that you'd want to have next anywhere in the world, who would you want to have? Uh, Chimaev. Everyone talks about his wrestling. Um, and listen, I, I said it before, I helped Gilbert get ready for that fight. Um, you know, there's different levels to wrestling, and I, you know, I didn't see a lot of Chimaev's um, international highlights or what he did at the highest level. Of I haven't seen that. Now, Granted, I know he's a hell of a wrestler in the cage, but look what Gilbert did. So, um, yeah, that would be fun for me. Hey, good evening, it's Kieran Rye. Um, my question to you now, you know, you've accomplished something great. Now, just a generic question. What's your plans to celebrate? And also, you, you know, you're in London, you know, one of the greatest cities in the world. Uh, what's your plans for the next couple of days, and maybe even tonight? Uh, you know, I have some friends. Um, that have been with me through the whole ride, a former college teammate, a good buddy of mine, um, and I got my family here. So I'm going to enjoy this. Um, we're going to hang out. I haven't got to see much of the city. Uh, I got here Sunday. This is a business trip. You know, the, when you come to, when you go to a certain city Sunday, you know, I got here Sunday through now, it's been strictly business. So I haven't really seen much, but uh, I'm excited to go home. I'm excited to see all my friends and family back home that have supported me and, uh, just get back to the United States. Thank you very much. Thanks. Uh, like you mentioned, uh, obviously you and Amisov have history. You know, if and when you know, that does go down in, in the future, how do you see that going down again? <clears throat> um, you know, I, 
he's obviously made improvements. We saw what he did to Lima. Um, we saw what I did to MVP. Uh, but I, I, I've had, I think that fight taught me a lot, and that Neiman Gracie fight taught me a lot. And just it's bigger moments, right? It's just each each fight is stepping up to a bigger moment, a bigger stage, and I've grown a lot. My hands have come a long ways. Uh, not burning myself out in some of those situations. Um, so I'm really, I'm just growing up as a fighter, you know? And so these last two fights have really, I've really experienced that out there. I felt it. Um, this was a quick turnaround, you know, I had three weeks off and then right back in here, but I felt, uh, I felt at home in there. Um, and you know, fight week for a lot of guys, when you take six, the crazy thing I always say is, we look at every other sport, those guys are competing two to three times a week, right? I guess, you know, the NFL, it's one time a week, but they're competing baseball, soccer, football, they're competing, you know, hundreds of times over their career. Whereas fighting, we might only fight once or twice a year, and we're trying to become the best in the world. Well, it takes all that experience, like walking to the cage is a crazy thing, you know, that, that I don't think anything else is that same experience, you know? Um, so I think going back to back quick, really let me feel comfortable in there and have that confidence. And with him obviously being unable to compete, who do you see uh, yourself defending the interim title against this and why? Um, I think uh, Jason Jackson, you know, teammate of mine, and Lima, are, I think they're going to fight. So that's number two and three. Um, I don't really know who else, you know, where, where everyone else is at, obviously. Um, We'll have Bellator figure that out, the matchmakers, um, Coker, and they'll, we'll go from there. You know, right now I'm going to enjoy this, and I'm going to take a little time off. Thanks. Just one, I wanted to just circle back on something you mentioned earlier about your, about your wrestling career. You said you sort of just came up a little bit short in your wrestling career. You carry your wins and losses with you throughout your athletic career. You're standing there with a championship belt over your shoulder. What's the emotion running through you right now, having seen the course well, all the way through, all the wins and losses you've had on the wrestling mat, coming through Bellator, you're standing there with a championship belt over your shoulder. What's the emotion going through your head right now? Um, it's kind of crazy because when you first get into this sport, <laughs> you know, at I was 22, 23, you're fighting on regional, local shows, and you're not making any m money, and you're kind of asking yourself, why am I doing this? I, you know, I love competing, I love fighting, but, you know, your friends are starting to get other jobs and, and move on with their lives, and you're kind of asking yourself, you know, what, really, what's the point of this? And then, you know, five or six years down the road from when I first started, it's for this right now, um, to be world champ, um, to be able to take care of, you know, me and myself, my family. Um, it paid off, you know, and, but really for me, it was to become the best in the world. That's why I got into this, was was solely to become the best in the world and um, now I'm going to keep going and and I you know I, I'm the best in the world right now and now it's to become you start looking at that pound for pound list and um, to become one of the best ever with a guy like Robbie Lawler in your ear all the time who is a Hall of Famer and one of the best fighters of all time you know that's what you want to become 